the cockpit. It's the Tom Mikey Show. You ever been in a cockpit before? No, sir. I've never been up in a plane before. You ever hang around the gymnasium? And now, and now here he is, Tom Mikey. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Mikey Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You got to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. I can't believe this story is from the New York Times. Clearly, the New York Times is um, engaging in some of the same tactics that the uh, that the Wall Street Journal is engaging in. Trying to figure out ways to make the paper more interesting to the little ladies. The little ladies don't like reading the big, bad New York Times. It's big. There's a lot of words on a page. Not any pastel colors like the Wall Street Journal. It's not colorful like USA Today or anything like that. They don't know how to get the ladies to read it. New York Times, primarily known for 10,000 word treatises on national security, presidential campaigns, New York City politics. Not a lot of chick action when it comes to the readership of the New York Times. So apparently, the New York Times is doing what uh, so many other magazines and newspapers are. They're dumbing down. And this story, you, it, it, I just don't believe it. It's from the New York Times. Sent to us by a listener, by the way. Here it is. Again, remember, this is the New York Times. He dreads the day she first pops the question. He's come to expect it. She'll lean up against him, place her hand on his chest, and look deep into his eyes. Then she'll lay it on him. Baby, will you hold my purse? And at that moment, it won't matter whether the object in question is a teased poodle of pink fur with rhinestone straps or a triple reinforced workhorse that could have seen Clint Eastwood through his last western. At that moment, her purse is no longer a purse, but an 800-pound drooling gorilla with handles. And now that she's asked, he is walking the paper-thin line between... Humiliation if he takes the thing. And inevitable trouble if he doesn't. Because as far as holding handbags goes, most women consider their safekeeping among the highest honors. Really? Your purse is very personal, said Jan Reed, 39, a vice president for finance at a software company in Foster City, California. They're not just a place to put your lipstick in your credit card, said Ann Nelson, 33, a writer in San Francisco who has no small degree of proprietary zeal about her 30 designer and vintage bags. I really love my purses, and I'm not sure I'd let anyone else hold them. It's got to be my boyfriend or my dad. You break. For many men, however, being entrusted with a handbag means being unwillingly thrust into alien terrain. This is the New York Times, by the way. I hold it, but I don't like it, said Mike Reed, 41, a biologist who is Ms. Reed's husband of 13 years. If you're holding it, you want to be standing by a woman so people don't think it's yours. The fear is that people think you're a sissy and you carry purses all the time. Some men won't even go near them. 
I don't want to be standing out there holding a purse, said J.D. DeTremp, 55, married father of four in Menlo Park, California. My ego would be shattered, he said. What if somebody walked by who I knew? I would never live it down. A more subtle fear, though, is that holding a woman's purse sends a signal that the man is not in charge. Now, there's the nub of this thing. It's about so much more than holding a purse, said one Silicon Valley venture capitalist who agreed to discuss his aversion only if he was not named. He said it's not about doing a favor. It's about showing this is my boy. It's about marking territory. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That guy's a listener, I'm telling you right now. Mr. DeTramp agreed. He said, a purse is a mark of humiliation. Effectively, you're being dominated. What's next? Why do purses hold such a masculating power? Freud wrote, the female genitals are symbolically represented by all such objects as share their characteristic of enclosing a hollow space, which can take something into itself. His list of such objects included boxes, trunks, and cases. Were Freud writing today, no doubt this season's pulsing orange python bag by Tom Ford for YSL Reeve Ghosh would make the list, by the way. I never even read that quote from Freud when I started saying that it's not an accident that a purse is shaped like a vagina. Who knew that Freud agreed? Purses didn't always convey such complicated signals. According to Anna Johnson, author of the book Handbags, The Power of the Purse, the purse originated as a unisex accessory carried by men as well as women. Her research turned up a crusty 5th century Scythian pouch, one easy to imagine a man dangling casually from his fingertips. But men lost their grip on this power some 13th century later, when couturiers introduced filmy empire waist dresses. Fashionable women lost their pockets apparently forever, and the reticule, or purse, took hold as a girly fashion in its own right. Now strictly a feminine accessory, bags were lost to men, who were stuck forevermore with their hands in their pockets, Ms. Johnson writes. Dr. Deborah Tannen, the linguistics, pro linguistics professor who wrote the 1990s bestseller, You Just Don't Understand, Women and Men in Conversation, said a purse is, quote, such a marker of being female. Femaleness is stigmatizing to men, she added. It's like when little boys say you touch a girl and you get cooties. Deed. Of course, purse phobia doesn't apply to all men. Some men say they carry briefcases for the same reasons women carry purses. The bicycle courier bag is a common sight, too. I just don't care what people think, said Eric Sobalvaro, 37, an information technology executive, who's taking time off to be a stay-at-home dad in San Francisco. I'll bet he is. I'll bet he is. He said, I sling it over my shoulder. I am perfectly comfortable with my own sexuality. Grant Geringer, 38, a telecommunications expert in Denver, said he has answered calls for purse assistance from his mother, sisters, and daughters, as well as his wife. What's the big deal, he asked. I'm not going to be wearing the thing if my wife is not with me, but why would I not help, even if it's pink? Really? Pal, can I tell you why you shouldn't be helping? Let me interrupt this story for one moment. The New York Times delving into this important issue. See, by the way, may I point out, as I'm mentioning the New York Times here, you see, a long time ago we realized that the stuff on the front page of the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Los Angeles Times, was not the stuff people care about. I just have to throw this in, okay, because it's important. Years ago, we figured out there were issues that were more important to the average person, which included whether to leave the toilet seat up or down, and that's never on the front page of any newspaper. And isn't it interesting, after all of these years of uh, getting big audiences and getting all of this attention in talk radio, isn't it amazing now that the newspapers are adopting some of the same material? I'm talking about the ones that are very heavy and newsy and important and self-important isn't it interesting that newspapers like the New York Times are writing stories like this now? 
It started off the other way around. People calling my show and saying, why don't you talk about important stuff? Why don't you talk about politics? I used to like it when you used to talk about politics. And now the New York Times is writing about whether a man should carry a handbag. Just thought I'd point that out. But anyway, pal, why shouldn't you help out by holding that purse, even if it's pink? I'm going to tell you why. Because, and I've said this on the air years ago, and I'm going to say it again. When your wife goes out to the mall and tries on clothes, she's got a purse with her. You're at work. She's got a purse. She's not handing it over to the cashier to look after. She's not handing it to somebody standing next to her in the store. That purse gets dealt with. Generally, I believe, it gets taken into the fitting room where it sits next to her or it hangs on a hook. But that purse is cared for. Otherwise, your wife would never go to the store without you. She'd have to wait until you were there in case she needed you to hold her purse. The reason a woman asks you to hold her purse is to emasculate you. It is to take away your masculinity. And while you're uh, taking her purse, why don't you just detach your testicles and insert them inside? Because that's where they're going. Right in her little pink purse. That's right. Her little Kate Spade number. That you look so wonderful standing around in Victoria's Secret with the other uncomfortable guys pacing around. Holding the purse like it's a sack of manure. I hate using the word manure, but I'm, I'm on the goddamn radio. God damn it. Yeah. You ever see that? I mean, I'm not making this up. Any, I don't care where in America you live, go to the mall tonight. Drive on over and go to Victoria's Secret. It's in almost every mall. It's like Starbucks. It's everywhere, okay? You go up to Victoria's Secret, and there you will see at least three or four men at any location of Victoria's Secret, at any moment, anywhere in the world, you will see three or four men standing there holding a purse with two hands, pacing back and forth, waiting for her to get out and relieve him from purse duty. And, of course, the implication here is that uh, I will emasculate you so if any other women come into the store and see you, they'll know you're taken because these women are coming in and shopping for sexy underwear, and I want them to know that you're mine, goddammit, and I'm going to do that by emasculating you. That's what I'm doing. That's what your wife is thinking but never telling me you see and you you pussy you don't even bother to like debate this you just go yes dear yes dear uh-huh yes dear and that she's got you right where she wants you you're buying her clothes and she's marked her territory by handing you that girly girly purse that she carries around and now you're carrying it around so everybody you think it's bad you know you know your wife always insists you wear a wedding ring when you're married you think that's bad enough how about you walking around with a nice pink purse? What woman would come talk to you? Because not only does she know you take it, but she knows your wife or girlfriend is within steps of where you are. It's marking territory. That's all it is. For God's sake. I'll read you the, the rest of the story, which is very brief here, but I just wanted to say that to you. Still, even men who are game enough to sashay around wearing their mates' purses say they know they are flirting with a taboo. Tong Pham, 30, an Internet marketing consultant based in San Francisco, said he'll wear a purse as a joke in an all-female environment. But it's a different story, he says, when I'm in a sports bar and I'm surrounded by men. You don't want to look like too much of a wimp. Well, first of all, when you go to a sports bar with your wife or girlfriend, uh, there's a number of guys who already are wondering what you're doing. Why'd you bring her? She's not going to enjoy any of this. She's going to complain and ask her to the bar. She's going to sit there uh, with her head in her hands, wondering when the game is going to be over. Then she will sashay off to the ladies' room and say, Would you hold this while I go to the bathroom? Oh, no. No, you can't do that. You cannot. Goes on to say, yet there is one bag that a man can wear over his shoulder, even a ruffled plastic pastel affair, and heard nods of respect from other men. A diaper bag. 
Every man interviewed said the diaper bag is in a class by itself, an emblem of pride for guys who are doing what it takes to care for their little ones, which any manly man knows includes hefting an assortment of bottles, diapers, baby wipes, toys, pacifiers, and whatever else works to calm his progeny. Of course, what are you doing carrying the kid around and the diaper bag? Where is she? It's what women are for. It's what you're paying for. That's part of what you're paying for. You know what I'm saying? If you make more money than she does and you're paying half the bills or you're paying more than half the bills, it's like a tax, okay? What are you getting in return for that? Among the other things, she should be carrying the diaper bag, the dirty diapers, and the little crumb cruncher. That's what you're paying for. You should insist on getting value for money spent. Anyway. That's that's the vast majority of the story. You get the idea here. You got to be crazy to agree to carry a woman's purse. Got to be crazy, right? Tom Liges, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Can you manipulate me into bed? I don't have to. I just whip out my wallet. I thought you don't pay for anything. Oh, I wouldn't give you any money. I just show it to you. Oh, you just showed it to me. I wouldn't give you a penny. The Tom Likey Show. Tom Likey Show. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. Okay. Go to your calls here. The New York Times writing about this. Unbelievable. Let's say hello here to Carrie on the Tom Likey Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Man. This stuff is a bunch of BS. I don't think a man should ever be carrying a woman's purse. Ever. There's no reason. She can do everything else by herself. She can wipe her own butt. She can carry her own purse. That's exactly right. Every woman out there goes out by herself sometimes. She goes to the mall. She goes to the salon. She goes uh, to get waxed, whatever. And that purse is everywhere she goes. Exactly. Who's holding it then? She is, and she's going to find somewhere to put it. There is no reason that she should ever have to ask her boyfriend, her husband, her dad to hold her purse at all. Absolutely. It's a bunch of crap. No doubt about it. It, Yeah. It's just absurd. I've been married for almost five years, and I have never, ever asked my husband to hold my purse. Well, that's good. And if he's a real man, he'd tell you uh, where to stick it if you ever did. (laughs) The <laughs> only thing I ask him is, hey, here, hold the kid. I'm leaving. Hold the kid is not the same as hold the purse. It's his kid, too. <laughs> but the purse, yeah. the purse is all yours. Yep. But that's just degrading. Whenever I see a man, as a woman, I'm laughing at him. Yeah, why don't we worry about I'm the sorry, stuff that's degrading to men? I don't understand. This is degrading to men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm looking at the woman like, how, Why? Why are you doing this? Yeah, well, you know why she's doing it. You know why she's doing it. Nine times out of ten, though, the guy is like maybe a two. Just dumb enough to hold it. Yeah, or his bank account's a two. One or the other. The Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number, David, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I um, was wondering, what if you offer to hold the purse? Why would you do that? Well, uh, let's say you're uh, at a a carnival, and the kid wants to go on a ride, and you don't want to go on the ride, just maybe rides aren't in your bag. So you say, hey, uh, I'll hold the purse, you take the kid on the ride. Why would you do that? I mean, it's it's, it's called uh, help, you know? What would she do if she was there without you? She took her kid to the amusement park without you. If she took the kid to the music park without me, uh, I don't know, maybe... Uh, She'd find a way to take care of that purse, wouldn't she? Well, I, I, you know, I mean, what would you do? Would you, would you rather be there and have a chance of someone stealing it? or, or would you? How would anybody rather... steal it? She would have taken care of it somehow. 
So, so you're, what you're saying is you don't you don't help out whatsoever. I mean, not even to not uh, not that. Not if it makes me look like I'm uh, being uh, d- uh, emasculated. No. I don't know. I, you know, I I can't believe that that you would say is, you know you're not going to help your wife at all. I mean, it's your kid, and it's I didn't for say I kid. wouldn't help uh, my wife at all if I had a wife. I'm saying that uh, I would not do this. Are, are you? I mean, is it that? Are you in, that insecure? Or has nothing to do with insecurity. Once you let a woman take away your balls, uh, she'll start doing other things to you. Well, that, I mean, that happens. I mean, I, I, I place that under insecurity. You can place it anywhere you like. Uh, I'm telling you that I do all kinds of things. I lift the heavy objects. I will take out the garbage. I will uh, take care of the gardening. If I have a house, I'll go out and take care of the, the plants outside, the lawn, whatever. I will do all the manly things, but I will not be seen with her purse. No way. Because why? Because by it's asking me to, by, it's a, it's a, it's by her asking me to do it. And by the way, most times no man offers this. It's generally uh, a, a demand placed upon you. Uh, generally, that is being done in order to emasculate you. It's a test. Uh, of course I, it is. I, I don't. I don't. I, and I've offered to hold. Uh, hey, I'll hold the purse where you take the I'll kid on the ride. I bet you have. You, you know, but what I'm saying, I mean, I, I can understand. Hey, you hold my purse. No, you brought it. You hold it. Right. I, I mean, but I mean, I, I think there's certain situations where y- you can squeak by and you know make an exception. What if she asked you to wear a dress? No, that that's the same. Why? As why? Why? You, why? Are you insecure no about your masculinity? Uh, what if she asked you to wear a nice mini skirt? It depends on what shade it was. Yeah, uh huh. You know, but what I mean, if she said, "I'd like to see how this lipstick looks on you." And, uh, th- th- that's that's being. How about you try this nail polish? I like it the way it looks on your skin tone. I just want to see how that looks. Th- that that still has nothing to do with uh, two people helping a kid. Well, yeah, what if she decided that was something that would be helpful to her? How would that be helpful to? A kid? I don't. Uh, not, you forget. know why? I mean, you're the one. By the way, it's it. not helping the kid. The kid did not bring the purse. No, but the kid wants to go on the ride. The kid will go on the ride. Why don't you take the kid on the goddamn ride? You chicken? Yeah. Oh, so there you go. You're a pussy and a chicken. Yeah. All right. That's all we need to know there, pal. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. <laughs> Al on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Okay, Al. Hey, uh. That guy was a puss, because you know what? what I, my dad, my ex-wife's stepdad is the, is the ultimate puss when it comes to that. Right. But I just had an incident where I was at Walmart, and uh, my daughter asked me to hold her purse. Nine-year-old, first marriage. Um, I had to tell her, you know, this, this is not acceptable. This is, you brought it, you take it. Simple That's as right. that. And uh, I could just see, where, well, my dad holds it for me. I go, I'm your dad. And I'm telling you how men think. That's right. And I used to be the puss in the first relationship when I was married to my ex-wife. That's why she's your ex-wife. Exactly. And uh, I, with my second marriage, I straightened. They test you. Oh, they do. And I, they I test you, and then when you fail the test, they dump you. Uh, basically, that's what it was. That's what it ended up being. I started listening to you more and more when you were at the other station. And uh, she didn't like that at all. <laughs> Damn straight. So, uh, oh, of course not. But because uh, I'm ruining it for the rest of them. Ah, uh, yeah, you ruining it for no one. You're straightening people out. Damn straight. All right. Hey, how about that girl next door? Five hundred. We're not giving it away this hour. Uh, all right. Well, I'll check next hour then. <laughs> Thank you so much. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. The Tom Likas Show. Tom. The Tom Like It Show at one 800 800 tom We're talking about whether a man should carry a woman's purse. And now, no less an authority than the New York Times has weighed in on this subject. Dean on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? All right, Dean. Good. Man, that last caller was a pansy. Oh, no doubt about it. A complete wuss. Oh, yeah, dear. Hey, man, you know what? If, if, if a guy wants to hold a girl's purse, then he deserves to be humiliated. He deserves to be laughed and pointed at by other men. And he will be. Oh, yeah, he will, dude. It's, it's what it's about, man. 
You know, because if he wants to do it, then he's a pansy, and he deserves the humiliation that he gets. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's what i got to say, Tom. Uh, thank you for that, Dean. I appreciate it. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Blow me up, Tom. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? All right, Jason. All right. Well, first of all, that guy that uh, wanted to hold his wife's purse, yeah. I know why he wants to hold it. Why? So he can get his balls back, just for a little bit. You know, that's all. But um, the only way that I will hold my wife's purse, and she knows it, is that if I have a coat to put it underneath. So I'll wrap it up in a coat or something like that. That's the only way. And I have a... But well, what possible her. reason would there be that she would need you to do this? Well, we have a daughter, too. So, like, a lot of times she'll be lifting my daughter out and she'll ask me to hold the purse real quick. So she knows that I won't hold it for longer than 15 seconds. So you have a limit. Yes, I have a limit, and I won't walk with it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. Because so. you can't walk with it. Uh, like no. the uh, article said, you are sashaying with it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And not only that, with my daughter, whenever I take her out by myself, she's a, uh, she's a little... So she obviously has a little pink uh, uh, bag. I don't take that either. Oh, please. Not one of those Hello Kitty numbers or something, is it? No, it's a Winnie the Pooh. Oh. But well, I take... Uh, oh, how appropriate. A Winnie the Pooh diaper bag. Exactly. So I take a... Uh, <laughs> what cartoon character would be more appropriate for a diaper bag? <laughs> Man, yeah, true. I always wondered why they called him Winnie the Pooh, and now I know. Yeah, we got Winnie the Pooh diapers. And by the way, and while we're on the subject, that Winnie the Pooh, if he isn't gay, you know, the guy is going to come out one of these days. <laughs> Have true. you ever heard a man with a higher voice other than Michael Jackson, please? Nope. Uh, Mike Tyson. Oh, yeah, I, I guess you're right about that. 1-800-5800-TOM. Rich on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Hey. <laughs> I'm doing okay. Uh, yeah, I got a story about uh, my ex-girlfriend that uh, she asked me to hold her purse once, and uh, I actually did it, and I felt like I felt like the biggest wuss on the planet. Mm -hmm. So after that, I had a talk with her. I told her, I said, I'm never holding that again. Don't ever ask me. And uh, so the next time we're at the mall, it must have been like a week later, um, we're waiting in line to get some food, and she asked me to hold again. She said she's got to run to the bathroom. And there's like a big, long line of people, a lot of people around, and I'm like, oh, I can't believe this. Um, oops, sorry. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so, like, after a little bit of argument, she gives it to me, and uh, she goes off. And I'm, just, I'm furious. I look around, and there's a garbage can. I threw it in the garbage can. And I sat and watched as people dumped their garbage in there. After that, she came back. She said, where's my purse? I said, I threw it in the garbage. And she's, well, she couldn't believe it. And I said, I told you never to ask me to hold your bag again. And I got to watch as everybody watched her go through the same embarrassment that I went through as she dug through the garbage can to get her purse back. <laughs> she never, ever, ever again asked me to hold her purse. I'm very proud of you, Rich. I'm telling you, every guy out there, if their woman should uh, ask them to hold their purse, they should do the same exact thing, dump it in the nearest trash can. No doubt about it. Ryan, on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, first-time caller, long-time listener. Great to talk to you. I know. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm married. and uh, been married for four years. My wife and I have been together for six. Uh, she asked me to hold her purse one time when we first got together. And uh, I'm not up for throwing purses in garbage cans, but the one time she did when we were dating... I, right when she handed it to me, I guess she wanted to rummage through the uh, clothing rack. So she handed it to me. I took it, opened it up, started going through her wallet right there, right in front of her. Never again for six years have she asked me to hold her purse. I love that. You have to break them in early. That's really what you have to do. Right. Well, thank you so much for that, Ryan. Right. Appreciate the call. 1-800-58-TOM. Doug on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, hey, how's it going, buddy? All right, Doug. That guy hit it right on the head. As soon as that purse hits your hands, you open it right up and start sort through all their stuff. <laughs> what do you think they'd do if uh, you gave them their wallet? They'd be in there so quick, pulling out the cash and going through the credit card. Going through your receipts. That's right. That's exactly. what they do. As soon as you get a hold of that purse, all you need to do is start laying it out there. With, it doesn't matter where you're at, Victoria's Secret, wherever you're at. That's Just right. Put it right there. They will never give that purse to you again. No doubt about it. Tommy, take me out old school. Here you go, Doug. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. Ryan. Hey, I got a. You know what, pal? I agree with everything you say about a lot of this stuff, pal. But this time, I, I'm just not with you on this one, man. Why not? 
Well, check this out. See, you're going to go into Victoria's Secret. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's happened to me quite a few times. But you end up going to, uh, into Victoria's Secrets with your old lady, right? And you're hoping to get in there to see, you know, hopefully you can get some of that stuff on your on your girl, right? She's got her purse with her, which is a good thing because you don't want to have to pay for it, right? You, know, you hear what I'm saying, right? So you, you go ahead and you hold the purse while she lifts up some of that stuff to see if she wants to put it on or not. And second of all, you probably got some of your stuff in that purse, too. Oh, she please. Got, oh, well, what, what is in her purse? What are you keeping in your wife's purse? Okay, you, she's not my wife, first of all. Well, whatever she is. All, she, uh, I got my cell phone in there. I got my cigarettes or my keys or something, so I can lose. lose Don't you have pockets? What are you kidding me? Don't you have pockets? Oh, I what are you pockets. doing? She's not around. Hey, you, you stay with her. Oh, you stay with her. So you're never by yourself. You go to work. Oh, I'm talking about. Do you guys go to work, work together? Do you work at the same office? I'm talking about when we go shopping. What do you do when she's not around? Oh, I got my stuff with me. All right. Why can't you hold it with you? Uh, you got a good point there. I know I do, and you've been trying to avoid it. I, I know I do. Yeah, I just don't. I don't see how it, it. If you're in contact with your own, you're you're sure of your own masculinity. How is holding? Oh, it has like, nothing to do with being sure of my own masculinity. I'm. You know, one way I'm sure of it. I don't let myself get talked into doing things that would emasculate me. Okay. That's okay. one way I I know I'm sure of my masculinity because I have the balls to turn around and say I'm not holding that purse. Now, I that is a masculine man. I got an argument for you that, uh, see, listen to this. She's, the first thing she's going to say when you, when you start to complain about holding her purse, she's going to say, what, you're not sure of your masculinity? You're not a man? Is that what you're trying to say? I don't care what she says. A, a real man wouldn't give a rat's ass what kind of little feminine response she would give to your assertion. A real man would say, I don't care. Yeah, but it's not that big a deal. You're just holding a purse. Well, yeah, stop rationalizing here, will you please? Stop rationalizing. Stop it. Well, you're right. Everybody, every other guy that's in there with his old lady in Victoria's Secrets, he's holding purses, too. you damn straight. Tom Like It. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Like It. 1-800-5800-866. Tell these people they're freaks, but you know what? That's one of the reasons I listen, because they're absolutely hysterical. You want to hear all the freaks. Exactly. And nobody has more freaks listening to Tom Like It. The Tom Like It Show. <laughs> Tom like his show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's Rick on the Tom like his show. Hello. What's up, Tom? This is Rick. I know. I just so, said uh, that. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I got a hell of a story for you because I heard this story and it rang a bell in my mind. Uh, this goes back a few years back in when I first married my wife. I was a year into it. Me and her always bump heads, constantly bumping heads about you know about she she wants to push me to do things that men aren't supposed to do. And me, I'm the way I'm, the way I'm raising my son is I constantly tell him, constantly tell him, hey, women aren't supposed to do this. Women are supposed to be a certain way. Men are supposed to be a certain way. Well, one day we're at the mall, we're standing there and we're ready to get some pizza, you know. And my wife, all of a sudden, she tells me, here, I'm, I can't hold all this stuff. Here, hold my purse. And I'm all, hell, I'm not going to hold your purse. Put it on the ground. I'm not putting my purse on the ground. So she snaps at me, and she makes me hold her purse. And my little son looks at me, so I grab the purse, and I go, okay, I'll hold your purse for you. She goes, see, what, how hard is it? So right when she turned around, I acted like the purse was going to drop, and I kicked it. Boom! Yeah, baby! <laughs> That the purse was open, so everything spilled across the damn wall. Lipstick, you name it, it spilled everywhere. <laughs> I love that. And that's perfect. What I, the reason I'm calling to tell your other callers, do that. Because one of the things, women don't deserve that. They, we give them everything already, and they want us to hold their purse. They got some damn nerve. Like I tell my wife from now on, you want me to hold something, you leave it in the damn car. If you don't want to carry it, do not carry it. Do not bring it with me. You know, and that's pretty much it, man. You are absolutely right. But before you go, Rick, uh, Greg, what did you want to say to Rick? He's an idiot. You know, he sits there and he talks, and, and you know what? All this is made up. It's completely made up. Made up. No, no. I hope my wife is listening because she'll know. And my son, trust me, if you do this as a man, your son, you're, you're setting a good example for your son, an excellent example for people ahead of you because there's, there's no reason for it. Imagine, okay, let's put it this way. If if the, if the truth be known, then if if you go do something, will your wife help you? Like like my wife always tells me, come help me wash the dish from my hell no. Because if it was the other way around, imagine you're working on the car. You're working on the engine or something. Does your wife come out and help you fix the car? No, she doesn't. 
All the stuff that your wife wants you to do for her, she won't do in return for you back. So that's it's ridiculous, you know. And then she wants you to hold her purse. No way, man. Anybody that holds a purse is a big ass panoch, man. Big time. You know, you shouldn't do that, man. Be more of a man. Grow some balls, you know. Jesus Christ. Listen to Tom. Tom knows what's up. Because I've been listening to him for years, man. This helped me out in a lot of ways. What do you think, Craig? Rick. Craig. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Rick. You hold on, hold on. are raising you're raising your son to be exactly like you, correct? Hell yeah. Okay. We do not. Somos Mexicanos. We're both Mexicans, correct? Uh huh. Okay, boss. How much do you make a year? I make around 70. You make. What do you do? Me? I, we have a business out in San Juan Capistrano. Okay, what do you do? Basically, we're expediters. You're, you, we? We who? Me and you and your wife? You and a partner make 70 grand a year, so you split that 70, correct? No. That's in the Okay, listen to me. Listen I to me. Take around 70. You mean this, how long have you been married? Me, I've been married 10 years. We're running out of time hey, here. Hey, 10 years. Let me tell you something. 10 years, and it's you a, still it's don't it's do right. anything. Let me tell you something. You ask her to anything. come out to fix okay, the car you and the first? engine. Hold your wife first. You, because, but you won't do the dishes. Listen to these guys. The Tom Show.